We're recording this conversation in November 2021. A year from now, the world changes. The implementation of ISO 20022 to replace MT as the language of global payments is really going to shake things up. It's a difficult transition involving everybody involved in the payments chain, from payments operations people, product management, right the way through to the people who provide and maintain and operate the systems and technology that we use. A lot has been written about ISO 2002 as a theoretical benefit, but the conversations about ISO 2002 have been rather quieter. Bijou from Fioro no Software and I, Andrew Muir from Nth Exception, have enjoyed many conversations about ISO 2002 implementation over the last few months, and we thought it would be a good idea, perhaps, to publish some of these conversations so that you were able to join in. We hope very much to participate in those chats and to develop them further as we investigate more layers of detail under the complex but wonderful world of ISO 2002 implementation. We really hope you enjoy it. Implementing ISO 2002, who does the work? Can it be outsourced? Is it my problem as a bank? Is it a vendor's problem? Um, we're all pretty aware of the benefits of ISO 2022, what happens on a happy path implementation, but I'm guessing most paths are not going to be always happy. What goes wrong? What do I need to be ready with? What's the impact going to be? Really interesting question. Uh, precisely because, of course, all of the white papers and the documentation you can read online right now about ISO 2002 implementation specifically re references the happy path. But the same things that are going wrong today will be going wrong in the future. Only in the future, uh, they're going to be more difficult to capture and they're going to be more difficult to resolve. First problem, of course, is the one we've spoken about a lot. Uh, ISO 2002 is a whole new language. Uh, and just as our systems and our technology needs to learn that language, well, so do we. Quite often, problems get escalated and they escalate really quickly. They certainly escalate at a very inconvenient time of day, in the last few minutes before an important cutoff. And they get escalated to levels of management that want to know exactly what the resolution path is and how it's going to be reached effectively and to everybody's satisfaction. So the language of ISO 2002 needs to be learned by everybody. We've said that before. But let's look at another couple of examples of where things go wrong. One is a simple thing, the missing payment. Today, uh, that's usually a conversation. I sent you this payment. I didn't get it. Well, where is it? So you start looking through the usual repair queues, uh, the screening queues, where that payment may have suffered uh, some sort of stoppage. In future, that payment may well have been stopped by a number of different things operating on a number of different channels. There's a messaging channel, there might be an API channel, there might be a distributed ledger channel, each of which has some sort of screening or AML or repair queue kind of uh, facility on it. So when you're simply faced with the question, where's this missing instruction? Where do I look? How do I find it? Similarly, uh, there are duplicate payments, a fact of life. Uh, and of course, in a multi-channel world, that again becomes uh, a difficult thing to capture. Uh, I'm sure that in many cases, uh, the unique end-to-end -end transaction reference, or UETR, could be helpful to an institution in both of these scenarios. But let's just say the duplicate carries a different UETR. That is more than likely possible. How are we going to find this stuff? Um, one of the things I think we probably ought to talk about at some point uh, is what kind of tools and what kind of systems we might use uh, to figure out this stuff to help us identify where duplicates or missing transactions happened and what we do about them. But certainly in the early days of transition, uh, I think it's probably unrealistic to expect a lot of those things to be fully matured and worked into our systems from day one. So some level of thinking about how we're going to deal with those scenarios and how we're going to inform the stakeholders to those scenarios, both in terms of relationship management within the institution 
and the banks and other institutions affected outside uh, our own control uh, might be kept up to date with uh, progress. So I guess the next thing we probably need to think about uh, and have a quick chat about uh, is the skills and the tools that we might need in the real world uh, need to look and uh, what kind of uh, additions we might need to make to our organisations in preparation.